This is Junior Shake and I'm here with Hibak Pichama. Hi Hibak, how are you? I'm very well, thank you. Um, Hibak is the newly elected councillor for this uh, Lawrence Hill Ward. I did get that right this time, didn't I? Yes, certainly I had did. to have a little bit of practice off camera <laughs> just, before, just before I did. But yeah, um, you're the newly elected councillor for um, Lawrence Hill Ward. Um, and uh, you are from the Somali community in Bristol. And you just so happen to be a lady as well, so um, maybe not a first for a lady um, councillor, but that's definitely a first um, for a Somali councillor, if I'm not mistaken. And to have a Somali lady councillor as well is very impressive. Um, what I'm dragging you uh, down here for and you know, taking your time for is I want to know a little bit about yourself. Um, I want to know a bit about your background, you know, a bit about your story, your personal life, and then moving on to your political life, your political ambitions, and then also what is very important for our readers is what are you here to do for the people of Lawrence Hill? Um, what changes would you like to make? Um, what uh, what differences would you like to make, uh, if, if I can if I can put it that way? Um, so Hibak, tell us um, where are you from? So uh, I am. I was born in uh, Somaliland, uh, the capital city called Hargeisa. Um, my father and I came to this country when I was two years old. Uh, I lived for a period of time in, in Sheffield, but also for a period of time in Bristol, uh, where I attended primary school and, and secondary school. Um, I was fortunate enough then to, to go to go on to university and study law uh, at Leicester. Um, I moved back to Bristol because I had family here, but because actually I had some really important experiences that that sort of shaped me, I suppose, as, as a person. Um, when I was here as, as a teenager um, and also as, as, as a young adult, and part of my journey back to Bristol was, was about coming back to the family, but also coming back with a fresh pair of eyes, um, a fresh pair of educated eyes, I suppose, um, to revisit some of the experiences that I had as, as a child in Bristol and, and, and understand and, and learn whether there are in fact children experiencing the same sort of things that I experienced. Um, so you did mention uh, you're from uh, Somaliland, that's where you were born. You moved over here at a very young age, why is that? Because due to the civil war, um, the civil war in, uh, in Somalia impacted greatly on, on a lot of people. Um, but, but my family and uh, indeed my father as well, who um, was, was actually persecuted at the, the hands of the previous uh, government in Somalia. And um, we as a family experienced a lot of traumatic things, um, not least our, our house being formed while we were still in it. So when we, when we left our our, our home uh, in the capital city of Somaliland, we were literally refugees in Somalia um, and then refugees in Ethiopia and slowly but surely, um, like many people, found our way to the UK as a, as a safe haven. Um, and I, like many people, have been you know, fortunate enough to, to grow up in, in relatively peaceful environment um, and, and I was given the opportunities, namely under a Labour government, to, to access a good education system, uh, healthcare and, and so on. And so I suppose really it's, it's my experience and everything that sort of preceded joining the Labour Party and preceded standing as a candidate sort of informed, informs my politics to this day and informs what I want to change and informs um, what, I, what I see as, as good points about our society, good things that I see about life in Britain and, and about being a British citizen. But also, um, like everywhere in the world, there are always improvements to be made and so on. Um, Okay, that that's um, that's that's you know a nice insight uh, into more of you um, where you've come from. Um, when you first moved over to the UK, um, you mentioned uh, you had a little bit of time in, in Bristol um, and a little bit of time in Sheffield, Sheffield as well. Um, what was it like, um, you know, being young from a foreign country? coming into you know, a foreign country now uh, where things were so different, but I suppose you were so young you picked things up quite quickly. How was that like growing up in the UK? I think one of the really interesting things about it all was um, 
coming to the UK at such an early age and not really being conscious of the fact that I was different or that this land to me was foreign in inverted commas. Um, the interesting thing was that the older I got the more I was aware of the difference and so um, because I came here when I was two, two and a half I think, um, it was it was really interesting, you know, I went to school and because I already spoke Somali fluently at that, at that point, um, learning to speak English was, was a very tricky thing for me um, and was a very tricky thing for my, for my teachers as well because we lived in an area that, um, that, that we lived in an area and I went to a school that not a lot of BME children went to and so because my learning of the English language was much slower than all the other children the teachers thought that I had some sort of a learning difficulty uh, and transferred me from one school to another um, and, and my, my dad, uh, my late father bless him, had to work very hard to reverse that situation from the council uh, and it was a learning process for the teachers in terms of you know someone having when, when, when there's a new immigrant yeah, and yeah. there's a family, there's a ch children in the family and they can't necessarily speak English, it's not an indication of um, uh, an, uh, an education of learning. Yeah, like yes. a, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was, um, that was probably my first experience of the concept of foreignness or the concept of other. Yeah, that was my first real experience of it. Okay, and then obviously that that's um, through let's say what your your primary years. Um, moving on to uh, your secondary years, your A levels and university. What did you do at that point? Um, at that point, um, I mean, sorry, what, what A levels did you do? Um, okay, I know so you, you did mention you studied law yeah. at university. Mm -hmm. I do have a, a memory; it's not a complete <laughs> sieve. I'm not asking you the questions over and over. Um, um, but the reason being, um, I, I, I'll help you out in terms of why I'm asking you this, um, because I'm sure there are a lot of people, not only from uh, your community, the Smiley community, but from the wider BME community, a lot of young girls out there that I believe can look up to you um, and to where you're heading and what you're trying to do. You know, it's, it's not every day um, that you have a woman Somali counsellor. It, it's not something that happens every day. If it was, I wouldn't be speaking to you right now. Um, so in, I'm honoured. Yeah, in, 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 uh, in that sense, that's what I'm asking you, sort of, what did you do, what stages did you go through? Because some of the readers, uh, maybe some of the younger women, some of the young, young girls as well, um, would maybe like to know, well, Hibak did it. I wonder how she did it. You know, what did she do? Did she go do her A levels? You know, what did she study at A levels? Then she went to university. How did she get there? What did she study there? So, just just a little bit about that. Absolutely. Well, it's really interesting that you should ask that because um, politics and getting into politics wasn't ever really something that just dawned on me one day. Oh, you know, I'm going to get politics again. It was something that my dad sort of introduced me to at a very early age. So I remember um, being nine, ten years old um, and my dad taking me off to Labour Party meetings. Um, I remember my dad having meetings at home with um, various councillors and various MPs and talk about elections, talk about policies. Uh, and so that can, you know, a lot of people struggle with the connection between politics and ordinary people's lives and that connection, uh, the relationship between the two seems to be a world apart for a lot of people because they see politicians, they see them talking about policy using jargon phrases that not everyone understands and they think whatever it is that those people that are suited and booted are doing has very little influence on my life and I, I suppose I was just fortunate enough to have a father that understood the relationship between the two understood how critical it was to the lives of working class people, ordinary people, families in Britain, that politicians and politics is right, um, and that policies are, are right, and that, and that the, the fundamental reason, that the, the reason that's at the heart of why people go into politics has to not be about themselves, and has to be about changing society and changing politics and governance for the, for the benefit of, of the communities. Um, that we serve and so you know getting back to the very practical things you know from literally the age of eight or nine um, until 20 
20, I suppose, um, my dad would march me off to these to these meetings. Uh, and I was lucky enough to, to, you know, you hear about this thing, pushy parents. Yeah, um, yeah. He was a pushy parent in in a way, um, but it was it was pushy from the point of view that he was very keen for me to be able to sit at a table with adults and feel confident enough to say what I think about the situation, yeah. which is that, which is something I feel is so missing from politics today. And I think if we just talk about local politics in Bristol. Um, in the council chamber, the representation of young people is, is, is appalling, as is the representation from BME people and other equalities groups. Um, and, and that's a fundamental thing that we need to get right. We need more young people to engage in conversation around politics because the decision that is taken by politicians and the conversations that, that take place at City Hall do have a direct impact on people's lives. and. The truth is, and one of one of the people that inspires me said this, and it it really touched me, and it stays with me until today. Is we need politics to work first and foremost for the people that can't find their way out of that politics. And a lot of people in Bristol, a lot of people in Lawrence Hill, and other areas of population can't find their way out of that politics. And so we need to get it right. And one of the ways of getting it right is to make sure that we attract many people from diverse uh, backgrounds, from diverse opinions, and bring them to the, to the decision making table so that they're able to feed in their ideas. And, and you know, that's not a responsibility that just falls solely on the shoulders of a politician. It, it's the responsibility of parents, it's the responsibility of teachers, it's the responsibility of society in general to support children in understanding the very, very close critical essential relationship between politics and what happens in their lives.